Now we're going to start the actual readings. This is part two. The first reading is the prophecy of the new Torah. Uh, who is the Holy Spirit, as we're going to see. And then the psalm is one of the most beautiful psalms in the Psalter. It's the one we all know as the Miserere, you know. Be merciful to me, O God, according to your great mercy, and so forth. So we're going to look first then at this reading from Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. It's the prophecy uh, about the new law. You see, the people are in exile. Both the north and now the south uh because they sinned, they're not worthy of being in the land and being taken care of by God. So he chases them out and turns the land over to unbelievers uh, and puts them, at least a lot of them, up in exile. Why? Because he's got to change them so that they can be his people and be the people who bear the Messiah to the world. And so he's going to be pretty tough with them. Now, Jeremiah He's still back in the south at this point. And he's praying, I imagine. And he's saying, God, look, we broke your law and we got chased out of here. And we deserved it. But if you bring us back, we're going to do it again. You know, that's the way we are. And the Lord said, no, I have something in store. I'm going to put my law right here. So it, it, I give you the interior principle of response. You see, the Torah is the way you respond to my saving, merciful action. So I spell out the way you should respond, and you didn't keep it, so you're going into exile. But I'm going to give you a new law. Just think of the depth of, of understanding and the mystical understanding that Jeremiah has uh, with this uh, understanding of this new law. And so the text begins, you see, Hine, uh, yamim ba'im, behold, days are coming, an oracle of the Lord, and I will literally cut, I will make, you know, I will make a uh, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, a berit hadasha, a new berit, a new covenant. Now, let's think about this. We've, revol we've revolted against God, we've, we've disobeyed Him, we've besmirched His name to the rest of the world, we've made a mess. And we're getting punished for it, as we are right now. Is that it? No. God has more mercy in store. He's going to put within us, as he has with us, the very principle of response. And that's what he's telling Jeremiah right now, you see. Hinei yamim bayim da'um Adonai. Says the Lord, this is going to happen, okay? I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors, the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke my covenant, though I was their master. Oracle of the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Oracle of the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. That's covenant talk. I am your God, you are my people. That's ratifying. I'm going to remake the covenant. But I'm going to remake it by giving within you the principle the energy, the potential, the possibility of responding to my saving act. That's the promise. Now, do you understand that? Is that the way we do? Suppose somebody disobeys us. I will come and make it easier for you to obey. That's not what we usually do. We wank them. And we, we, don't, we don't do that. God is saying, okay, now that you see you can't keep it, I'm going to uh, give you my spirit within you, who will be the principle of this new covenant. That's why, you know, the tradition of the church, what is the new law? The Holy Spirit. 
because he lives in us, dwells in us, moves us, empowers us. So, it will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant. Okay, but this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, oracle of the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now that's covenant talk, talk, you see. I am your God, you are my people. You find the same thing in the Song of Songs in another way. Dodi li ba no kilo, my beloved to me and I to him. See reciprocity, sealed, that's covenant. So I will be their God and they will be my people. They will no longer teach their friends. Actually, the text says, um, uh, oh, well, never mind, their friends and relatives. Okay. Know the Lord. Know the Lord is a key phrase. Know the Lord doesn't mean I can recite the creed. It means I obey. One of the beautiful words in the whole prophecy of Hosea is this, knowing the Lord, which means living out what he wants. That's knowledge of the Lord. There's a beautiful say, saying in Jeremiah who's deriving a lot of his understanding from Hosea. Uh, Josiah's son was Josiah's son was on the throne and he was building all kinds of things and collecting money and taxes and so forth. And here's the oracle. You are not like your father. Your father cared for the poor. Your father, you know, helped worship. Your father didn't live in big paneled houses. Is not this to know me? You see what know means? It means to recognize. And recognize in two senses. To perceive, I recognize. Here's, there's a guy walking down the street. Oh, that's Joe. I recognize him. I know him. And then the other one is, I acknowledge your authority. I'm going 75 miles an hour in the 35 mile zone and the cop pulls me over. I say, officer, I recognize your authority. Well, those two dimensions of perceive and acknowledge are both caught up in this word yada, which has as its basic connotation contact. Yet the word, you know, yada in, in Hebrew is based on contact. Contact that is followed up, you see, by real perception and real obedience. As it says in the first letter of John, if anybody says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. It's impossible. Because, as the theologians will tell us, we love God and we love each other with the very same love. You can't compartmentalize. I love you, God, but these people I can't stand. It doesn't work. You know, if you love me, you love them. If you don't love them, you don't love me. It's simple. But this is where it starts with this, you see. I will place my law within them. I'll write it on their hearts. And very, their heart is their real heart, heart. The very depth of the person, right? I will be their God and they shall be my people. That's covenant. I'll be their God and they will be my people. Of all the people on the earth, you will be my people. Okay? They will no longer teach their friends and relatives. Know the Lord. But remember what I said, just said about know the Lord. Perceive him, acknowledge him, experience him, and obey him. It's all in the same word. Have contact with him and live out that contact in love and in obedience. Know the Lord. Everyone from the least to the greatest shall know me, says the Lord, an, uh, an oracle of the Lord. Why? Because I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no longer. That's the promise of the new law. Isn't that beautiful? And that's why, you see, the Holy Spirit is the new law. After our Lord has died in reparation for our sin and risen again, then His humanity, risen from the dead, is now the apt instrument by which the Holy Spirit can be poured out into our hearts. There's that very famous text we've looked at before, Acts 2.38, I think. Having been raised up from the dead and seated at the right hand of the Father, he received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and he poured him out. That's Jesus. You see? 
So he's the source after his resurrection. So having recognized, therefore, that we have sinned, we have this gorgeous psalm. The, it's called the Miserere, you know, Psalm 51. It starts off, Haneni Elohim kohasdecha. Haneni, that's be gracious to me. Hanna, Anna, a woman's name. Be gracious to me, God. You see, uh, according to your hesed. Hesed, enthusiastic fidelity to the covenant. You promised, we don't deserve it, but you've promised it. So according to your hesed, you see, uh, and uh, and the greatness of your rachamim, your 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 mercy, your we've we've done all these before, but when they come again, they're so beautiful, right? Rachem, popular etymology, maybe the right one. Rachem, rach, rachum comes from rachem, womb, guts. God feels for us. That's the word, you see. So, with your hesed and the and greatness or richness of your mercy, you see, blot out my offense, you see, and uh, thoroughly wash me from my guilt and from my sin cleanse me. If you don't do it, God, it can't be done. There's nothing I can do to cleanse myself from sin. Only beg your mercy. That's the meaning of the cross. Yes, says God the Word, I will become incarnate. I will die in reparation for your sins so that you can be set free. So the psalm goes on. They skip a bunch of verses. A clean heart create for me, O God. Bara. Lev tahur bara li Elohim. Okay? But bara, I think I've said this before, bara means to put something there that was never there before. Only God can bara. And in the whole of the uh, Old Testament, only God is the subject of the verb bara. Only God can do this. Make the world. Let there be light. And there was light. Who can do that except God, right? Now it says, a clean heart, create for me. Only you can do this. This is as big a job as, as making the sun and the moon. To give me a pure heart. Create for me, O oh God. Renew within me a steadfast spirit. And once you've given it to me, strengthen me that I don't turn away from you again. Lev tahor. Now what's a pure heart? See, a pure heart is one that's concentrated on God. It's a simple heart. It's not got God and a lot of other little agendas going. It's just got God. And because I've got you, God, I can love everybody and imitate you and obey you. But that's why. You see? Restore to me the gladness of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Make me strong, willing, obedient, you see? I will teach the wicked your ways that sinners may return to you. And so you see how this psalm is praying for what Jeremiah promised. And that's what we're doing on this fifth Sunday in Lent. We're saying, Lord, please, you know. I remember a lady once, I was talking to her. We were, I was down in an inner city church. She says, oh, I see all my friends. And they keep saying, you know, that they gave their life to the Lord. But I don't see that there's a lot of change going on. So I said to the Lord, this is a beautiful phrase. I, I was 20 years at least ago, and I can still hear her voice. I said to the Lord, Lord, if you're going to heal me, Heal me real good. I don't want to go on saying I'm healed or saved and not obeying you. Okay. 